Passions are running high. The whole country wants to hear that little word. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. There, he said it. There, he said it. Say it again, Dominic. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Actually, that apology was for getting the order of journalists wrong during the press conference. The media do not have their apology or their resignation, and this story will run and run. The story for those who've been blissfully unaware of the splenetic rage fest engulfing the UK right now is of Dominic Cummings, the Prime Minister's chief aide, having driven from London to his parents' property in Durham during the height of the lockdown because he and his wife had suspected COVID-19 and they were concerned about childcare for their four-year-old son. Has he broken the rules, the spirit of them, if not the letter of them? Now, where do we get the idea about the spirit and the letter of the law? We might return to that issue. But everyone wants to know, is it one rule for the powerful and another for the rest of us? Is this hypocrisy, duplicity and elitism and of a kind that could cost lives? I'm not going to tell you the answer. I am going to tell you where the questions come from and why this huge division in our society points to a towering commonality that could unite us. And it needs to unite us, and fast. Let me begin with a psychological perspective. Can we please acknowledge that as we consider lockdown, the good of the society and the actions of an individual, people bring different assumptions and different mindsets. Let's start with some more minor ones. Some people are into fine details. They are sensing people, which is great, you, you, you need that. And some people are into the big picture. They are intuitive, which is great, you need that too. In society, some people create the new innovation that no one had dreamt possible, but then other people need to come along and actually raise the finance and run the business and make sure the show stays on the road. You need the dreamer and the doer. Some people want more rules and more clarity on those rules. And some people want broader principles and are happy with less clarity. That's life and you need both. Some people are risk averse. Some people are risk neutral. Some people are even risk lovers. Now, that's huge because risky behavior is dangerous. It could be catastrophic. But also risk aversion to the point of paralysis is dangerous. It could be catastrophic. It's actually vital to have both types of people in your society and for them to listen to each other and not demonize each other. Some people are temperamentally rule breakers and that's bad. And some people are temperamentally rule makers and that can also be bad. Some people are the kind to sneak out and break lockdown and some are the kind to report them. Many, many people have broken lockdown in various ways, and when that's pointed out, they feel resentful. And many, many people have locked themselves down more than they needed to, and when it's pointed out, they feel like mugs. I'm just talking about human psychology. This shouldn't be controversial. People are wired these ways, and they do react these ways. These reactions are powerful and visceral, and we've barely considered them before we've hit send on the latest tweet. We bring certain mindsets to these issues that were forged by brain chemistry and family and education and culture and class. But even though we have these different mindsets, one thing unites us. Everyone thinks they're right. Or they think they have the perfect balance of orderly and disorderly thinking. Me and my tribe has perfectly optimized the risk reward trade-off, right? Our psychological differences are supercharged by a tribalism that exalts our preferences into something moral and existential. My tribe good, your tribe bad. As moral psychologist Jonathan Haidt says, we all have righteous minds. We can't help but think in these moral and, let's face it, religious categories. Our thinking is driven by pre-critical assumptions that are not the outcome of sober reflection. Our rational aspect is like the rider of a six-ton elephant. The elephant is our intuitions. These intuitions powerfully take us in certain directions and those directions will be different for different people. Some are into care and fairness, some are into loyalty and sanctity. We need to be attuned to those differences and instead of shouting at the riders, we need to understand and address the elephants. This is not to give a free pass to all bad behavior. It's, it's not like, oh, I can't be mad at him. Bless him, I blame the elephant. 
Now, we can still call out errors and injustice and cast a vision for the good life, but we need to recognize that before we make our righteous pronouncements, before we get up on our high elephants, we need to know that our elephant has been setting the course for our discussion all along. Our intuitions are running things, not our logic. So what are some of these intuitions? Let me name three that have been key recently. Equality, integrity, and humility. Firstly, equality. No one is above the law. Not the powerful, not the elites, not the prime minister's aid. We are all one. Integrity. The hypocrisy of our leaders is appalling. It cannot be one rule for Dominic Cummings and another rule for the rest. Our leaders must practice what they preach. And thirdly, humility. When our leaders make mistakes, they should apologize. If they are wrong, they should fall on their sword, as it were. Our leaders must not lord it over us. They are our servants. This is a powerful case against Dominic Cummings. But the defense goes something like this. Equality, indeed. He's just like you. He did what any father would do. Integrity, indeed. So apply that standard to the media pursuing him. At times they have literally fallen over themselves in an unholy scrum to accuse him of not social distancing. I think we'll believe you. That seems pretty hypocritical. Humility? Well, Cummings came out in front of the cameras in person and stammered his way through a question time. And during questions, he at least acknowledged, in theory, that there are things he's gotten wrong. We will await further elaboration on what those things might be but Cummings at least acknowledges that saying sorry is a virtue that's worth espousing, theoretically. Now, what do you notice about these assumptions? None of them are obvious at all. Equality, totally non-obvious. What is obvious about people is how very different we are. Where do we get the idea that we're meant to be equal? I mean, page one of the Bible, but if not from the Bible, where will we ground this intuition? That is pressing. We're tearing each other apart. Is there a good reason not to? Are we really equal? How so? Integrity? Why should I practice what I preach? I mean, except that a preacher said it 2,000 years ago and he's built the modern world, but most regimes have never bothered to mask their hypocrisy. Of course it's one rule for the elites and another for the plebs. Of course kings make the rules and the people live by them. Where do we get the idea that a ruler would put himself under the law to be judged by people, scrutinized, dissected on full display and found virtuous? Where do we get that idea? The Bible. And what about humility? Rulers lord it over their people. That's what Jesus said. But then Jesus called himself a servant, a minister, and he fell on his sword, so to speak, in the most definitive way. He's the God who is humble, and now we expect rulers to serve, to apologize, to repent, even to fall on their sword. But where do we get that idea from? The Bible. And without the extraordinary foundations of the Bible, there's no proper grounding for our extraordinary expectations of equality, integrity, and humility. Oh, we have such expectations. Both sides have the expectations, but without a reason for those expectations that goes above the party political, we can only fracture. And it becomes a shouting match, and the hashtags battle it out between Boo for Boris and Scum Media. But let's step back. What are the mindsets that we bring to this? What are the unexamined intuitions, and is there any reason to believe in them? We seem to have a sense that something exists above and beyond our rulers. We hope so. We hope that far above Dominic Cummings and far above Boris Johnson and whoever your favorite politician is, there is equality, integrity, and even humility. This is our great hope. Not that one political faction wins. We're sick to the teeth of factions, of division, hypocrisy, and pride. The only one who can really heal us is Jesus.